tell me about the day so far. How's your morning? Ah, exciting. I mean, we just had the minister's breakfast. There's a lot of activity going on and some really good questions coming from the audience members about the North, how this government is responding to supporting the North and resource development in the North. So the conversation's been good. And as you can tell behind me, there's a lot of people here. So it's uh, it's been a real success so far. Well, if the popularity of the event is any indicator, then there's definitely a lot of interest. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so you are going to be on a panel later today. Tell us a little bit about what's coming up there. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm moderating a panel on innovation and technology. So the conversation there is going to really, really be focused on what's the changing nature of, of our economy, especially as new technology gets deployed in our resource sector. How do we respond to that? How do northern communities respond to that as jobs change, people shift? Um, we're seeing a dramatic change um, across our country and here locally in terms of how our organizations, our industries that have been traditionally been running the same way for decades, it's all changing. And so the discussion we're going to have is, okay, how do you adapt? How do you stay ahead? And how in British Columbia do we compete on a global stage? Absolutely. Well, we'll be interested to, to listen in on that one. Um, when it comes to resource development and especially um, LNG in the Northwest, how do you foresee that um, changing the region? The LNG project specifically? Well, or I guess just... Um, developments in general yeah. in the Northwest? Well, I mean, I think it's fair to say that the history of Northern BC is it's resource-based, right? So that's not going to change. So the, the foreseeable future and past the foreseeable future is our economy in the North is going to be based on what we pull out of the ground, what we grow out of the ground. And I think that's an important message, number one. The LNG Canada project is a game changer for the North. It's an extraordinarily exciting opportunity. It's the largest infrastructure investment in the history of Canada. It's happening in Kitimat, a community of 9,000, which, just aside, was home to the largest infrastructure investment by a private company in BC history just a few years ago with the Rio Tinto smelter. So that community is going to experience explosive growth, so is Terrace, and the communities around the region are going to see the impacts of that, especially our upstream communities in Fort St. John, Dawson Creek, and the Montney area where the gas is actually coming from. So that's the LNG story. The other side of the coin, though, is that not all of our industries are doing that well. Forestry is having a tough time. We're now into the post-salvage era. The mountain pine beetle impacts are real. We're seeing curtailments at our mills. Those are impacting communities in a real way. And so it's important that although we embrace these new project opportunities coming forward, we don't forget the real hurt that's happening in our communities on the other side. It's just the natural part of cycles in the economy, right? So it's a yin and a yang story. It's a mixed bag. We're better here today in the economy in Northern BC than we were a year ago when we were having this conversation, but we still got a long way to go. And so we can't lose sight of the opportunities for growth and we have to take advantage of it. Exciting times. Yes. What do you think is the biggest issue at this year's forum? Well, I think the biggest topic of conversation is LNG. I mean, it's been six, seven years of discussions around LNG and we finally have a major project going forward. So there's a lot of discussion around that. There's a lot of discussion around the impacts to the land base, what that looks like vis-a-vis -vis relationships between the Crown and our Indigenous peoples. How is that being sorted out? How are we being innovative in British Columbia around reconciling that relationship, which is extraordinarily important? The other piece of the conversation, which I mentioned earlier, that's happening is, again, forestry. We are seeing those curtailments. We are seeing the impacts of the beetles playing out in our communities. How do we adapt? And so those are the two conversations that I think you're really going to see going. And I think, of course, you've got a half a cabinet here. There's going to be a lot of questions around how is Victoria supporting the North?